Today we're going to talk about composing natural transformations. Last time we saw that natural transformations are some kind of morphism between functors, and so if they are some kind of morphism, then we really ought to be able to compose them, otherwise you'd be stupid to think of them as being morphisms. But let's just recall what the definition of natural transformation is. We're allowed to have a natural transformation in this situation when we've got a category C and a category D and two functors that we could call parallel because they've got the same source and target, even though they're not really very parallel on this blackboard. Um, so they go like that, and this natural transformation is allowed to go in between them. We can't have a natural transformation between two functors where the source and target are the same. Um, so a natural transformation is given by, for every object in C, a morphism in D, and for every morphism in C, this naturality square has to commute. Okay? So fundamentally, we've got a bunch of morphisms in D going from f of x to g of x. So hopefully, it's now obvious to you how we can compose natural transformations. So let's just draw a little picture over here so that I don't run out of space. Uh, composition. Composition. If we've got, we're still going to just have two categories like this. If we've got a functor f, a functor g, and a functor h, and a natural transformation alpha like this, and a natural transformation beta like that. I'm now going in completely the opposite direction across the board from uh, my co capster colleague in his string diagram lecture. So I'm now going, I'm going down the board like this. What can we possibly do to compose these things? So the composite. beta composed with alpha. Well, how do we define a natural transformation? First of all, we define its components. So we've got to have a component at x that goes from, it goes from, well, this is a source, okay, beta composed with f is going to go from f to g, h. So this is beta composed with alpha. So it's got to go, the component has to go from f of x to h of x. Hmm, how could we possibly do that? Okay, well look, if we stick g of x in the middle, we've got a component of alpha that goes from f of x to g of x, and we've got a component of beta that goes from g of x to h of x. So miraculously, we've now got a component that goes all the way from f of x to h of x. Fine. So what do we have to do now? We have to check that it's really natural which means that for every morphism in C, this kind of square has to commute. So what's that diagram going to look like? Here's the naturality square. I could have just drawn it under there, but it might have been confusing. Uh, right. So here's the component of beta composed with alpha at x, and here's the component at y. So here's f of f, and here's h of f, and this is the square that has to commute. But look, there's this great big gap in the middle of the square that's just crying out to be filled in. So let's go ahead and fill it in with a g of f, and bingo, this diagram commutes because of the naturality of alpha, and this square commutes because of the naturality of beta, so the entire thing commutes. So this really is natural. It's at this point that we start using the word natural in an extremely technical sense, rather than just natural, it's actually natural. Right, so we have a way of composing these things. It's evidently it's going to be um, associative, because composition just happens by composing morphisms in the category, and it's also going to have a unit identity. In identity uh, 1 on f, which goes from f to f, well, what's it going to do? It's going to have components that have to go from f of x to f of x. So, of course, it's just going to be, um, the components are going to be the identity in the category D. So the identity has components, the identity on, let's get rid of that for a second, the identity on f of x, which goes from f of x to f of x. So what have we done? I hope you all feel highly confident that you can go away and check that this forms a category. A category... Oh, thank you. 
this forms a category. A category of what? We have to find a whole category of, of things between C and D. So this is the functor category. The objects are functors from C to D, and the morphisms are natural transformations in between them. Good. Now you might have noticed that there's another possible way of composing natural transformations. Because look, we can compose functors in this direction along the board. So what happens to the natural transformations if we do functors along this direction? So this is a whole new thing. Also, now let's uh, get rid of something, maybe all of it. We can compose horizontally. In this direction. Now this is a bit of a funny looking composition. And it's usually written as star. So this happens if we've got three categories. And this goes from F to G. And maybe this goes from F prime to G prime. And so what are we expecting? We're expecting... Well, we can compose the functors along the top, so we get F prime composed with F. We can compose the functors along the bottom, so we get G prime composed with G. And so we expect something that goes lives in there, and we're going to call it beta star alpha, to show it's different from beta round circle uh, alpha. How are we going to define it? We need to define it on components. Well... Beta star alpha has to have a component of x. Now, where does it have to go? It has to go from f prime to f of x to g prime g of x. Now, let's think about this. f prime to f of x is just f prime of f of x. Now, we've got a map from f of x to g of x, which is alpha x. So if we do f primed on alpha of x, that takes us to f primed of g of x, right? Now this is g primed of g of x, and we've got a map from f primed of anything to g primed of the same thing, and that's the component of beta. So if we do beta at the object g of x, that sends us from f primed of g of x to g primed of g of x. Hurrah! Oh, we got that. But you might have noticed there was another way of doing it as well. Because instead of doing f prime on alpha of x, we could have regarded f of x as one thing. Maybe I'll turn this into something a bit more sensible looking. f prime f of x. So we could regard the f of x as one thing, and we could do the component of beta at f of x. And that will take us to g prime of f of x. And now we can use g prime of alpha and get us back to here, g prime of alpha of x, which gets us to g prime of g of x. Is that a problem that we had two different ways of getting there? Let's stare at this for a second. Oh, look! It's a naturality square for something, I hope. Hopefully it's a naturality square for beta. Because look, if we sort of turn ourselves this way up a bit, this is a component of beta, and this is a component of beta. And we're regarding alpha x as being a morphism from f of x to g of x. So remember, we had to have down one side the functor applied to morphism, down the other side the other functor applied to morphism. Ah! And so this is a naturality square for beta. So in fact, these two ways of going around the square are the same and give us only one way of defining horizontal composition of the natural transformations. Now next time, or perhaps in between, you can see if you can show that that really is natural, and next time we'll show how to show, talk about the interaction between the two kinds of composition that we just defined.